It's quite simple. I use Auth0. It's a great authentication provider, saves me a ton of hassle and work. There's still some config I have to do on my end, and there's a few caveats. So let's talk about it and show you an example. So why do I use Auth0? Because personally, I don't like storing user, super sensitive user data in my own database if I can avoid it. If I can avoid having user passwords, user credit cards, or sensitive user pictures, or whatever it is, I like to avoid keeping that out of my databases. I like to keep that out of my servers, out of my issue. I know how to do JWTs. I know how to do custom authentication, know how to do bcrypt, I know how to manage sessions and all that stuff, but I still don't like doing it. And the reason is it's a liability. It's something that you open yourself up to. It's another thing to worry about it. It's another thing to worry about. And personally, for my own peace of mind, I really like using a provider. And the best provider I've found is Auth0. It has, uh, has great compatibility with basically every platform. It makes it stupid easy to get everything set up and running. So let me show you how that works. So as is what seems to be basically tradition at this point, I went ahead and built out a little example app to show case how I do this. I like putting out these little Git repos that will help you out and kind of show you my thought process behind this. This is not going to be a detailed dive and tutorial into this whole API and setup. That is going to be a more detailed video I'm going to be doing over the next couple days. A while ago, I put out uh, this video where I was talking about how I like structuring my Go apps and stuff like that. And a lot of you had a ton of feedback. I am super appreciative of that. If you are someone who gave feedback there and, you know, showed me what I was doing wrong, gave me more feedback and that kind of thing, I have gone. I've tried to implement as much of it as I can, try and understand it, learn more. I am not right all the time, and if I am wrong, I want to know. Tell me that I'm wrong, and I will do everything in my power to make it right, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So I've been trying to take that feedback, build an even better sort of template thing here, and then I'm going to be releasing a video going over that in a little bit here. But for now, I'm not going to go over that, but I am using that here. So you want to get a preview, you can take a look. Again, if there's anything you really hate about it or really don't like, let me know. But I think this is utilizes the Go concepts a little bit better, and I think it's a bit cleaner, and I do definitely see a lot of the points you guys are making. So with that out of the way, what I want to talk about is how the Auth0 stuff is actually going to work here. So the point of this is not the API, the point is the Auth0, and the Auth0 lives within a middleware. So if I go into my internal and then Auth, I have this Auth uh, section here, then I have this middleware uh, file which is going to contain my, uh, middle, my Auth middleware. So what I have up here is this will just allow me to create a new Auth middleware so that anywhere in my app if I needed to create a new Auth middleware, I can easily add that and then attach that to any of my roots and handlers however I want to. Makes it super easy. Um, attach it to a group or something like that. I'm using Fiber for my uh, HTTP framework. No, that's not the most popular thing in the world, but I really like it. It's fast, it's easy. I don't need HTTP too, so I don't really care. So I'm using Fiber here, and then I have in here, the real meat of this is this validate token. So what is this validate token gonna do? It's basically just gonna use some libraries provided by Auth0 themselves to go ahead and validate the token that the end user passes in, and then it's going to just you know give me the either the results of that token and then hit the next function and go into the rest the API, or it's going to throw an error and crash. So the way that works is I go ahead and I have my config up here. This is being read out of my um, config from, I'm using Viper for my config. So I have this app.env, which has the information in it. So I'm reading out my Auth0 domain, getting my uh, issuer URL, and then I'm setting up this JWT validator. This JWT validator is the key uh, the key piece here. What it's going to do is it's going to take in this provider.keyfunk. This provider right here is just a nice little caching provider. Again, this is a package from Auth0 themselves. It's this Auth0 JWKS. It's going to be able to cache some information and make this a little bit faster. It's a nice little thing they provide. So you just pass in the key function. I'm going to say that I want to use RS-256. I need to pass in my issuer URL. So all I have to do is just take this issuer URL and then turn it into a string. And then I need to pass in my audience. So since this is an API, the way Auth0 does things is you have to pass in, you know, what are your audiences, which is effectively just what tokens uh, can we accept here. So whenever the token is created, it needs to be created with the the correct audience on it. So I'll show you on the client how we do that. It's really, really simple. So all I have to do is just pass in this um, slice of strings and all I need to have in here is just a.config auth0 audience. And that audience is going to be the audience for my um, the audience for my API itself. And that is configured within the auth0 dashboard. I have links in the readme and in the description to the quick start on, all, on both the Golang backend and the React frontend. Again, this I don't want to go too deep into this because it's really basic and easy and you guys can do it on your own. There's no real point 
point in me going through and hand holding you through the auth here. And honestly, I think it's probably good for you to go through and actually do that because you should understand your auth. Understanding your auth is a really important thing. So use this little framework and get this framework working and try and figure out how it all works. Why am I putting auth zero audience in here? Why am I putting auth zero domain in here? These whys are the key to learning this stuff. So that's why uh, that's sort of why I'm structuring it this way. I know I've logged off fatal F's in here, but you know, if I get to this point and I don't have my domain or my audience, then the whole app does need to just crash. Uh, again, you could do this a little more elegantly, but for now it's fine. Then up here, this is the real meat of it. We just grab our auth header here. So we grab off our authorization header. The typical format that I'm going to be using here is the bear and then some nonsense. So I have bear and then this giant monstrosity, which is the JWT itself. So I'm going to grab that off of the header, split it into, grab the second part here, make sure that it's valid. If it's not, I'll send down a, it's an invalid header. Then we go down here and we validate it. So just this JWT validator dot validate token, passing in the context of our servers. It's context is a whole nother video and concept for another day, but for now, I don't really work worry about it we just pass in this context and then we pass in the header parts one which is going to be the token itself we make sure that there's no error if there is one we're going to say hey you're not authorized you pass in an invalid token otherwise i can just print out the token info and then hit c.next and when i hit c.next that means that we have a valid user and we can go ahead and actually execute some authenticated route and within my user controller here i am actually going to be use our side with my user router i'm actually going to be using this so i have this auth metalware so i'm just creating a new auth metalware and i'm going to do user group use so when i'm creating this group of users anytime i have a root on the user object it has to be authentic now so I'm just going to use this new middleware then I'm going to go ahead and do user group dot get me and then I have this profile and all this does if you look at the controllers all it'll do is just pass in a message of you are logged in and that's it um, I know that there's a lot of boilerplate in here but it makes a lot of sense when you have a database again another video another time I won't get too off topic and uh, yeah that's the real key for the back end so uh, what we can do here is if I just do localhost 8080 uh, user slash me hit send and then we get you are logged in I can see the information down here uh, this is the token that I just generated from the auth0 dashboard you can just do that within the test there's a test panel on there or whatever you just test from there really basic and then I also made a little front end for this so this wouldn't be any use if you can consume this so I made a little react front end for you so right here within this web directory I have this source uh, it's just a Vite app I I um, use V, don't use create react app. Other content creators have great videos on that. I'm not a front end guy, not my domain, but just no use V. Uh, so we go over here and then we're going to have it within this main. This is where really the only interesting thing is going to happen. I have this auth zero provider uh, again, follow the quick start. Look, I have it linked down below, follow the quick start, look at it, figure out how all this stuff actually works and then look and then come back here and see why I'm doing what I'm doing. We're going to have our domain here, which is just going to be whatever domain you have for your auth zero project itself, your client ID, you get that from the uh, console. And then this audience needs to match the audience that you had within your server. So your server audience, in your client audience, this auth zero audience needs to match, and that's how we validate the, that these tokens are the same and they're valid to work with each other. So you need to make sure that you have this audience in here because you're going to be communicating with that external API. This redirect URI just means that when I log out, I'm going to come back to basically the root of my app. And then I have this app.tsx, and within here, um, this is just the boilerplate of create Vite or just making a new Vite app. And I have up here the use auth zero object, login with redirect, is authenticated, log out, and then get the access token. The real key here is going to be this get access token silently what i can do is this is asynchronous and i didn't want to set up like react query or anything so it's you know it's one too many npm installs for me so all I did is I just did some callback hell, good old fashioned, the old way. I just did get access token silently, then you get the token, then I make a request to 8080, I pass in uh, for my headers, authorization, bear, and then whatever nonsense it spits out, matches this exactly, makes a lot of sense. We go down here, dot, de dot then, we get the response, we turn that response into JSON, and then we're going to go ahead and just print out the data dot message. So if I actually show you how this works, uh, we go to Vite React TS, so I'm uh, logged in, I'll hit log out real quick. I will log in real quick, continue with Google, uh, hit that, I should probably censor those, I don't know. Um, and then we just hit show API call and then you are logged in and that is going to come from this uh, server You can see up here. We got all this stuff right here and it actually has some different stuff here So this just had a bunch of stuff up here. You can see the stuff that's on the JWT So I have that's coming from this is the uh, root and then this is the audience over here And then this is the user ID itself So I actually have my user ID right here You can get more stuff out of this and if you would like to see a deeper breakdown Let me know but this is sort of just an introduction to what I use why I use it again I use it because I don't trust myself with 
tokens in the back end. I know I know how to use them, but I still, it's just a liability I don't, I don't like having. So I like using a provider and Auth0 is by far the best provider I've ever used. So that's why I use it. Again, take a look at the, uh, this little project down below, I have uh, instructions within the readme. I think it's a really good exercise to go through and actually like do this. It'll help you as a dev. You will get better learning. The best way to learn is to do so go through and actually do this. Set up the Auth0 account, connect everything in and learn why I'm doing everything. That'll help you a ton. If you enjoyed this, make sure you like subscribe, do all this stuff and uh, have a great day.